It hasn't been since the days of the Xbox 360 that I've been heavily invested in first-person shooters. Poning noobs in Halo 3 and Call of Duty was a nightly occurrence. These days, I'm too old and I'm a bit too slow for the latest PvP shooters, but PvE? With the right hook, I'm in. I played Soul for a few months ago during the Steam Next Fest and it caught me by surprise. It had this cartoonish yet brutal art style, which was a great hook for an extraction shooter. Now Sulfur has just hit Early Access, and I was lucky enough to get the earliest of Early Access, pre-launch access. I've been stumbling on a fair few extraction roguelike hybrids lately, from Below the Stone to Deep Rock Galactic Survivors. So far my experiences in these games have taken me mostly underground, and Sulfur is no exception, at least initially. You are El Padre, a priest, the shepherd of your flock, until one day a witch showed up and f***ing napalmed your church. You're out for revenge, you're on her trail, and this leads you to a cave filled with... with blue goblins. So, bloblins, if you will. Arming yourself with your trusty pistol and a f***ing katana, you venture into the caves to dispatch this arsonistic wench by slaying her bloblins and deciding what to do with the bloblin civilians. Master Skywalker, there are too many of them. What are we going to do? Soon you'll leave the caves and find new areas to wreak absolute havoc on. I gotta admit, at the start, I thought this game was easy. I did a couple of resource gathering runs and started absolutely battering through the boblins. Headed on into town, leaving cultists crying in my wake, and then I died. And then again. And after a few careless runs, I was back to pretty much nothing. Each time you die, your congregation takes pity upon you, and their donations get you back up on your feet. It's that classic risk and reward that's so satisfying that roguelites and extraction shooters do so well. Your character doesn't level up, your power comes from knowledge and also your earthly possessions, the loot you secure on each run. But do you know who does level up? That's right, you, each time you like and subscribe. So consider doing that uh, right now. The array of loot that can be found on runs is actually absurd. Dozens of weapons which can be upgraded with oils. As you use a gun, it levels up. Each level up opens up an enhancement slot. Flaming bullets, poison bullets, explosive bullets, as well as stat changes like increased capacity, reduced spread, and various other stat adjustments. Some oils also have debuffs to balance out their buffs, slightly inconveniencing you, or you can balance out these debuffs with other buffs from a different oil in a different slot. On top of all this, you can add attachments, scopes, rails, chokes, silencers. Your guns start off plain Jane, but with enough levels can end up looking like the ZF f***ing 1. The combat can be really intense. When you're down to a sliver of health, with no healing items at your disposal, peeking around corners, waiting for enemies to come to you, scrambling as your position is overrun, and you have to fall back. Or maybe you're stomping around the early level with some highly leveled guns and just heeding the bloblins no mind, stocking up on mushrooms. The gunplay is awesome, the visceral damage done to your enemies really sells the growth of your guns across a run and into the higher levels. Enemies seem to be made of two layers, a, an undamaged outer layer and an under layer. The outer layer is shot and cut away, leaving the squishy, fleshy, bony under layer. It's a really cool effect that conveys the gore without the need for giblets everywhere. Also, there's giblets everywhere. Oh, and the blood. The blood. If you get spun around, you can quickly tell which direction you came from. There are tons of clothing and armor options providing loads of stat upgrades from the expected stats like defensive upgrades to the unexpected ones like coyote time which determines how long you stay suspended in the air when you walk off a ledge. Or stats like wearing sunglasses plus one, which does exactly what it says on the tin. You have a helmet slot, a chest slot, and two feet slots, meaning that you will spend the majority of the game wearing unmatching shoes like the degenerate that you are. Unmatching socks is one thing, Kevin, but shoes? Shoes? Bees? There's also a few trinket slots as well. Finally, the number of food items is crazy. 
These heal you and can sometimes provide temporary stat upgrades or they can cure things like poison. During a run you'll find ingredients to cook your own items. This will start with very basic items like a mushroom skewer, becoming more advanced as you progress to future levels where new ingredients start dropping. Some recipes make sense, some don't, but they are all there for you to discover. Most foods heal you over time. This game is really generous with how and when you can teleport out if you've gotten far enough in to charge your amulet, but you do need time to digest that free course meal that you just rammed in your face, stuff your face and don't get out of dodge, and you're begging to be taken out. So I think you're seeing how this game works. Drop into a level, hoover up resources, mow down enemies, Aim for a net positive outcome before you either teleport away somewhere past the halfway point, or you stay on to beat the final boss. Stage 4 is decision time. Entering either of the latter levels half-cocked with poor weapons and poor quality food is a self-imposed death sentence. You need to be fully cocked because in the later levels the crowds are bustling and the boblins, well, the boblins now know how to do magic. It's such an addictive gameplay loop. Did you just beat a level? Oh hell yeah, we're going into the next one like a bullet storm of lead. Oh no, did, did you just die? Looks like you're poor now, better hop back in and start building your resources back up again. Whichever outcome will leave you crawling back for more. So we're at that point in the video where we talk about potential issues. Happy to report on the gameplay and game design side, there's none. The, the gameplay is fantastic. On the technical side... Oh my God! Okay, it's not that bad. It has one really persistent and annoying issue, and that's huge frame rate drops. These never got me killed, but they were really frustrating. These occur on almost every level really consistently in the later stages. You know, when the game's at its hardest. Now the devs are seemingly well aware of this and they've been making adjustments before it hits early access, but it's still an issue that is present. I did get a patch for the day one release and if I think back through the gaming I've done today, I'm, I'm recording this on release, I don't remember as many frame rate spikes. I did have people falling through the map and I did have an issue where one of my guns would break the game. Um, so that's, that's annoying, but th these are very hit and miss minor things for the most part. Elsewhere my only other gripes is around the controls, but I remap most of these so that's no longer an issue. Overall Sulfur has a seriously addictive loop and the style to back it up. Solid gunplay, huge loop variety, a decent cast of enemies and eerie atmospheres make for a really entertaining experience. Usually my biggest concern for a game entering early access is it doesn't have the content to justify dropping money on early doors. That's not a concern here. The number of weapons, items, levels, bosses means that I have no issues recommending Sulphur in early access. If the plans for early access come to fruition, Sulphur will be in my rotation for months to come. They've got levels and enemies and bosses and all sorts planned, so I, I hope it, it, it all it all materializes. <laughs> but what's your favorite weapon in Sulphur and why? Let me know in the comments down below. We've been on a bit of a roll lately, loving the YouTube journey. Excited to see what game we take a look at next. Thank you for the gift of your time and I'll see you next time. Bye bye